welcome again to First Baptist Church. I'm glad you're here this morning. Hope your heart's already been encouraged as we've sung our praises to Jesus Christ this morning. And I hope to encourage your heart as we look at the scripture. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Matthew chapter 21 this morning. Matthew chapter 21. What an amazing week in history this week was. A week unlike any other week known to mankind. A week that was planned before the foundation of the world. That's this week right here. And our God who sits in the heavens, who works all things after the counsel of his own will, orchestrated and set about a series of events that has forever changed the course of human history. Because of Jesus Christ, you and I have the ability to be called children of God. Because of Jesus Christ, you and I have the freedom to choose to serve God. Because of Jesus Christ, you and I have the potential to have eternal life with God forever and forever. And without this particular week, those things would merely be ideas. They would not be realities. I'm afraid that at times when we come to Easter, similar to Christmas, that we become consumed with the the consumerism side of Easter. In fact, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I saw Easter candy on December 26th. And they probably would have set it out earlier if they thought they could sell more of it. And I'm not opposed to Easter candy and Easter egg hunts and the Easter bunny and those things. They're fun and, and we've done that in our house. We've had Easter egg hunts and we'll hide candy and now our kids ask us to hide money. What is this world coming to? Next year, what will be credit cards? Dad, where's the Amex card? I can't can't find that anywhere. But I'm afraid, if we're not careful, Christian, that we're going to miss out on the celebration that this week holds. My prayer, just so you know where I'm going this week, is that our hearts all week long will be turned specifically toward Jesus Christ. Now, we ought to be that way every day, all day. Is that not true? We ought to think about Jesus and and operate and have him as as a priority, a preeminence in our life. But but especially on this week, I want to, with the Lord's help, look at some scripture this morning and this evening and then this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, have a communion, the Lord's Supper, and really just kind of just, if I can, just jerk our schedule and jerk our minds back to Jesus Christ. Because sometimes that's what you and I need. That someone just like, ugh, twist us back around. We have good intentions, do we not? But sometimes we miss the point. And the title of this message this morning is, Don't Miss the Point. I read about a <laughs> husband who's talking to his wife. They've been married a number of years, and, and she really, really loved him. I mean, she loved him like, like no other. They married just decades, probably millennia, most likely. He said, honey, would you buy me something special? She goes, I want to spend a lot of money on you, honey, for your birthday. He said, honey, I'd like something. I'd like something to go zero to, zero to 200 just like that. So she bought him a scale. <laughs> Yikes. Not as bad as the my wife and husband were sitting there. They've been married a number of years and she said, honey, you've always been so sweet to me. But I remember when we were first dating, you would just whisper sweet nothings in my ear. You'd cuddle up real close, and boy, you just were so romantic. She goes, could, could we pretend we're dating? Would you whisper those three little words I love to hear? Would you whisper in my ear? And he leans over and says, where's my supper? Hmm. <laughs> Say, Pastor, bring this back to the Bible. I'm going to need to. (laughs) Sometimes we miss the point, don't we? Sometimes we miss the point. Matthew chapter 21, we'll get there in just a moment, but I have two pictures to show you on the screen this morning just to illustrate this same concept. Because I want you to, to get this thought, don't miss the point. All right, so don't miss the what? Or if you don't remember anything else this morning, don't miss the point. I think the first picture would be up there to be a crossword puzzle. How many have done crossword puzzles in the past? How many have done them like this? 
Now, I tell you what, you do them like this, that would save a heap of time in life. Would it not? Well, you could fly through the cross. Because those crosser puzzles, they're hard sometimes. Figuring out the clues and guessing a random word. Boy, drawing a line in front of the end, that'd be easy. But just like this crossword puzzle, if we're not careful, we will miss the point. I'm talking to those who are saved and those who are not saved this morning. Both can miss the point. In this passage, we'll look at people who are not saved. But Christians, you and I can miss the point as well. Another picture up there. Before you go to that picture, though, I'd like you just for a moment to think about math class. How many have ever sat through a math class before? Come on, raise them up there. How many have sat through algebra? You ever see that little, that little question, find X? Look at this picture, if you would. Boy, that would save me a heap of time in math class, would it not? Right, Johnny, on your pre-algebra homework? Mrs. Evans, say, listen, here's what I'm going to do. It's here, and it's here, and it's here. Boy, I found 30 X's on this one page. Is that bonus points? But what have they done? They've missed? They've missed the point. All right, so with those seemingly useless pictures in your mind, don't miss the point this morning. But more importantly, don't miss the point this week, this year, and for your life. If your Bibles, let's look, please, to Matthew chapter 21. Where we're going to look at some people this morning who missed the point. Matthew chapter 21, beginning in verse number 1. And when they came unto me, and if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, the Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. The disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Take a moment, please, and look at verse 11. And as I read it, think about what they're saying here. They've asked, who is this? Who is causing all of this ruckus? Who is the one that is reaping this powerful celebration, this adoration, These cries, these cheers, the multitude surrounding, taking off their their coats and casting them on the ground and, and throwing branches from the trees on the ground. Who is this individual? And this is their response. This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. My friends, they missed it. They missed it. They were so close, yet so far. And I fear in your life and in my life that if we're not careful, we can be so close, yet so far. Let's pray this morning. Ask for his blessing and help on this time. Lord, I thank you for the moments that we have to open your word and to hear from you. And Lord, I'd ask, and I'm asking that you would use this time in an eternal way. Lord, there may be those here this morning who have never claimed you as their Savior. And I pray that today they would put their faith in Jesus Christ. They would not miss all that Jesus came and all that he was about. Lord, I pray for the Christian, those who have claimed your name and who have put their faith in you. Lord, I ask that you would help us as Christians 
not to miss the point. Lord, may we not treat this day, this week, like any other week. Lord, may we again be reminded about your power. Lord, your purpose, your plan for us. Lord, strengthen our hearts and encourage those who need encouragement. But Lord, I ask that you use this time. Help us, please. In Jesus' name I pray and ask. Amen. Matthew chapter 21, we looked at those verses, the first 11 verses. It gives us what we have called the triumphal entry. The entry of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem on a donkey, or the fowl of a donkey, and really celebrates his coming as king. Fulfilling prophecy, in fact, we see that in Scripture, and we know that this doubles back or goes back to Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 9, where we see the fulfillment of the prophecy. But my friends, I'm here to tell you this morning, as we look at this passage, that these people, during this entry, this triumphant entry, they missed Jesus in three specific ways. They missed it. They missed it. They missed it far worse than saying the wrong thing to a special someone. They missed it far worse than buying a wrong gift. They missed it far worse than missing a point on a test. They missed it because of who Jesus is. This morning, my prayer, my intention is that we will not miss it. Notice, first of all, how they missed Jesus as the king. Now, if you had been here a few weeks back, you would remember that the point of Matthew, his main idea in Matthew is to present Jesus as king. I preached on it on a Sunday morning. It's on YouTube. You want to go back and watch it. And, and throughout Matthew, uh, Matthew presents Jesus, the Savior of all mankind, as the king of kings, as the king of the Jews. If you were to move ahead in the, in the scripture, you would remember that on the cross... Above Jesus, there's a sign that Pilate, that Pilate places above Jesus' head. The king of the Jews. And that the religious leader, leaders wanted Pilate to change it. They wanted him to put, not that he is the king of the Jews, but that he said that he is the king of the Jews. Someone saying that they're king and being king can be two different things. But Jesus Christ is not two different things. He is the king, and he claimed to be the king. All right, those points are not separate for Jesus Christ, but they missed him as the king. So look in verse number 9, if you would, please, where, they, where the crowd makes some pretty fabulous statements. They say, And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried. Now, I love that word, cried, the, the idea of emotion, just, I mean, just shouting. It would be louder than any sporting event I believe you've ever gone to. This was the, the exaltation that, the, that this multitude was expressing. And they said this, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now understand, to the Jews, to be a son of David, a David as king. And remember that David had a promise that one of his would reign on the throne. It was a reference now to the king all right, so they were saying to this individual, Jesus Christ, they were saying, Hosanna to the son of David or the one who is worthy to be king. They were claiming him to be king, but they missed the point. That word Hosanna has an interesting, interesting connotation. It means we pray that you save us. Now, I don't believe the multitude exactly knew all they were saying inside of this. They were praying for salvation, but they just didn't realize the salvation that Jesus Christ was going to offer them. You see, what was happening during this time was that the Romans had taken over and they were ruling quite heavily and quite heavy-handed. They had edicts. There's ways they couldn't travel. In fact, one such law was that if a Roman soldier came to a citizen, a Jewish man or woman, and said, carry my bag, carry my equipment, they had to carry it for a mile. Jesus, if you remember in Scripture, said, Jesus said, if someone compels you to carry it one mile, carry it two. Just a completely crazy thought to these people under the bondage of the Roman Empire. The Romans had taxes. They had set up other rulers over them. In fact, Pilate was a Roman ruler. Herod was the Jewish counterpart. 
And these people were sick and tired of authority, of the authority of the Romans in their life. They wanted the Romans to be done. They wanted the Romans uh, to, to, be, uh, to be defeated. And they were praising Jesus, not as the king of kings, but as a king who would come and would overthrow the Roman Empire. That's why they were praising him. They wanted him to lead a revolt. They wanted Jesus to lead a revolution. They wanted Jesus Christ to overthrow all the authority around them. They, didn't, they wanted Jesus to overthrow the oppression that they faced and experienced. They wanted Jesus to save them. You son of David, save us now. Lead us to victory. But they missed it. They missed it. You see, Jesus Christ as a king, he fulfilled prophecy. As a king, he does reign supreme. In fact, Revelation tells us about the reign of Jesus Christ. And he was clothed, Jesus Christ, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. They were praising Jesus, but they missed Jesus as the king. They thought he was coming as an earthly king, and he was coming as a supernatural, eternal king. <laughs> so much better than they could have anticipated. Jesus Christ is king. He can and does do anything, and which wrought in Christ when he raised up from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Now hear this. They miss Jesus Christ as king because they wanted to mold Jesus into their own king. They didn't want to accept him as the king he is. They wanted to mold him into their own king. Listen, Jesus, you can be the king, but I'll tell you where you'll reign. You're going to reign right here in Jerusalem. You're going to kick out the Romans. You're going to help me and my oppression and my issues and my agenda. That's the king that I want. And my friends, we do this to Jesus Christ all the time. Jesus, you can be king, but let me define for you what that looks like in my life. You can be king right over here. And you can reign over here and you can control this. This health situation, you can control. And this problem, you can control. But over here... Don't touch this part. These are my guilty pleasures. These are my issues. These are my things that you don't get to be king over. You don't get to reign over this area. Not my attitude. Not, not this one. But, but Jesus, you have to be king over here. They missed Jesus king because they wanted to mold him into their own king. Their own ideas and own thoughts. I read a story about Woodrow Wilson shortly after his presidential election in 1912. He visited an aged aunt, an old aunt. He hadn't seen her for a long, long time, and she didn't quite know what was going on. And she asked Woodrow Wilson, well, what are you up to these days? He replied, I've just been elected president. Oh, yes, the aunt, the aunt responded, president of what? of the United States. Don't be silly, Woodrow. And I don't know if he ever convinced her that she, he was actually president. Jesus Christ is king. In this day, they laid down their coats. They laid down these branches and they proclaimed him, Hosanna, save us. Son of David, you're king. Do something. But they missed Jesus as king. But notice also they missed Jesus as a man. They missed him as a man. Verse 11, the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus Christ as king comes to reign supreme. Jesus Christ as a man came so he could feel our infirmities. I love this portion of scripture. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Jesus Christ as man means 
that Jesus Christ understands you and I. Maybe you've gone through a trouble in your life and someone comes up and tries to relate to you. Sometimes when people try to relate, they say the most foolish things. Most foolish things. Just on a side note, this will help you. If someone's going through a trouble, the best thing you can do is pray and be quiet. Shake their hand. If they want to hug, give them a hug. But, but don't say anything dumb and foolish. Sometimes people will say, well, I know just what you're going through. In fact, I heard about an illustration like this where someone had lost a child. And the, tragi- the tragedy of that and the emotions, someone came up and said, I know what you're going through. I recently lost my pet dog. You know, as a human, as a human, all right, let me take, step out of pastor role for a second. As a human, I want to punch him in the throat. It's not right. I'm just telling you how I feel as a human, right? I think you can, do, you can relate to me for a second, right? And it's like, what are you thinking? What are you doing? There's no connection there at all. Dog, child, no connection. I, I'm sure you loved your dog. And, and some of you have, and that's, that's great. My wife loves animals, and, and so do I. Love my wife. <laughs> but it's not the same thing, is it? No, 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 no. And, and to those who are now offended at me because you love your animals, God bless you. It's not the same. Go buy another dog. But when Jesus Christ says, I relate, he does relate. The Bible says, as a man, he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. We have not a high priest who can't be touched with our infirmities. We read throughout the Gospels and we see the life of Jesus Christ, and there are times that he wept. There are times that he was in sorrow. There are times that he was tired, that he was hungry, that he was wore out, that he got away from people to spend some time in prayer. He said, listen, I'm done. There are times as he's praying in the garden before the crucifixion that he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood, the stress and anxiety. Jesus Christ, as a man, can feel our infirmities. He wept, he ate, and he hurt. On the cross, he said, I thirst. He was a man, and this crowd missed him as the man that he was. As a man, he could die on the cross. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. If he was just God at this point, he could not have died on the cross and shed his blood. And if he was just man, he could not have paid for the sins of mankind. Jesus Christ as a man, he reveals the potential for mankind. I remember one time when the disciples were were in a boat and the, the storm came, Jesus Christ is asleep. As a man, he needed some sleep. They woke him up, and he st- stood on the edge, I think icing the edge of the boat, but maybe it was where he was at down there, and he said, uh, wind and the waves, peace be still. And the disciples have this response in their fear. They say, what manner of man is this? Like, like what? who can do this? Now, understand, they'd already seen miracles They'd already seen feeding of thousands of people. They'd seen demons cast out. They'd seen the lame walk and the blind to see. And then when Jesus Christ stopped a storm, they were like, whoa, what manner of man is this? My friends, let me introduce you to the manner of man that Jesus Christ is. He's a man unlike any other man. Born of a virgin Mary, but his father is God. Came to earth and Announced by the angels. His name is Jesus, for he shall save their people from their sins. The man who, at a young age, realized he was about his father's business, even when his parents, earthly parents, did not. A man who willingly ministered to those who would reject him. Training disciples, those who would, who would deny him. A man who loved. A man who gave his life as a ransom for many. This is the man we celebrate, and his name is Jesus. Romans chapter 5 says this, For if if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. See, they miss Jesus as king. They miss Jesus as a man. And number three, they miss Jesus as the Savior. They missed him as the Savior. You know, when they said he was the prophet of Nazareth, 
I notice here that, that they did not announce him as Jesus Christ. Christ being the anointed one, the promised one, the Messiah. The Jews knew about the Messiah. They knew the Messiah would come and would deliver them. And they missed Jesus as the Messiah, as, as the Savior of mankind. They missed him as the one they were looking for in Acts chapter 7. Stephen, the first martyr, is, is, on a, is giving a lesson to religious leaders. And he says this, Which of the prophets have, your, have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now been the betrayers and murderers. My friends, a Savior, he was the one who could answer all life's problems. As a Savior, he was the one who would redeem his people. So knowing all this, I want to challenge you this morning to not miss the point. Don't miss the purpose and the plan of Jesus Christ. Don't miss the point. You see, it's not enough just to know about him, but to know him. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. You see, the people that day, as they're casting their coats on the ground and proclaiming, Hosanna, son of David, perhaps even showing acts of adoration and worship, they missed, they missed the oppression that Jesus could deliver them from. They wanted temporary relief, and Jesus Christ was offering eternal relief. They wanted a temporary solution, and Jesus Christ was offering a supernatural solution. Don't miss the point. There are some who know about Jesus, but don't know Jesus. They come to church, and they're faithful at church. They know about Jesus, but they don't know who Jesus is. They never asked him to be their Savior. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. Believing in Jesus is to believe that he is the Son of God, that he is the Savior of the world, that he is the forgiver of sins. And by asking him for salvation, he freely offers forgiveness. This is to believe in Jesus. It's not enough just to know, but we are called to believe in Jesus Christ. But number two, my friends, it's not enough just to know and believe. We are called, we are called to be all in. If your Bible's open still, turn over to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, I beseech you, I implore you, I ask you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I find sometimes, my friend, that all of heaven is interested in the cross. All of hell is terribly afraid of it, while mankind are the only beings who could more or less ignore its meaning. Heaven knows the significance of Jesus Christ. The devil and his demons know the power of Jesus Christ. In fact, in any, any interaction in Scripture, they're always fearful of his supreme power. But it's mankind, humans, men and women, who sit in the middle and miss the point. Oh, it's nice to hear about Jesus and nice to go to church and nice that people have some religion in their life and nice, but, but, but don't be too committed. They miss the point. Well, that's good for you, and I'm glad you have your own thing. They miss the point. I'm saved, but, but I don't want to be one of those crazy Christians. I, I can't, no, 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 no. I, I can't do that. I can't be that committed. They miss the point. One more picture for the screen, if you don't mind showing that one. The 
It'll take you a second to get it. You can't see in the back. It's like an iPad with a picture of a cutting board. Now, my friends, any time that we don't follow Jesus Christ, we've missed the point. You see, this is not the purpose of this iPad. And the purpose of life is not to live with myself as king. The purpose of life is not to just for me to be a, a, a human, a man or a woman. And the purpose of life is to know that I cannot be my own savior. And if I live life this way, missing the point, I will have destruction. And the Bible says corruption. You see, this scenario on the screen behind me and in front of me will work for about 15 seconds. Will it not? And then it all falls apart. And when it falls apart, great will be the destruction. And in life, we're fooled sometimes. Because for a few seconds of life, it appears to be working. We place Jesus as king over here, but not over our life, and it appears to be working. We don't trust Jesus as Savior, though we know about him, and for a few seconds, it appears to be working, but we've missed the purpose, we've missed the plan, we've missed the point, and heaven knows, and if I can, hell knows, but humans largely ignore what's going on. So as we begin this holy week, if I can, can I encourage you not to miss the point? Can I encourage you to make sure, first of all, that Jesus Christ is not just king over here, that you're not just molded him into your own plan, but he's king over everything. That you remember that Jesus Christ as a man, he can feel the infirmities. He's relatable. And Jesus Christ as Savior, as Savior, demands a response. Belief and commitment. Belief in Jesus, if you've never believed, after you believe, commitment. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Not my purpose, not my will, but thine be done. Have you missed the point? Thank you.